gonna take you back to the past. He's gonna take you back to the past. To play the shitty games that suck ass, he'd rather have a buffalo. Take a diarrhea dump in his ear. He'd rather eat the rotten asshole. We've only touched upon some of the many classic gaming consoles like the Atari 2600, but now it's time to introduce you to two of its competitors. Feeling down and dirty, feeling kind of me. Exhibit A, the Intellivision. I've been from one to another extreme. Exhibit B, the ColecoVision. This time I had a good time, ain't got time to wait. Both tried to take down Atari and both had a similar library of games. I wanna stick around till I can't see straight. It's like today, you got all these games, you don't know which way to look. First, we're going to talk about the Intellivision. It was test marketed in 1979, but officially released in 1980. Notice its fine wood texture. Everything back then was made of wood. You know the Stone Age? Well, that was the Wood Age. The Intellivision came from Mattel Electronics. Now, you know what else they made? The Power Glove. Now, that's a bad sign right there, but it was a great game system for its time. Now, I'm going to whip through a bunch of random games, mostly shitty ones, but I'm going to tell you right now, I have three common complaints. Number one, many of the games are very similar to other games, and often they're blatant copies. Number two, without instructions, they're difficult to understand how to play. Number three, the controls suck ass. And in this regard, the main problem is the controllers. Why a numeric keypad? This is a video game controller, not a phone. Then there's two little buttons on each side, which are usually the fire buttons. It's awkward to handle. And rather than a joystick or a control pad of some kind, you get this weird disc. Sometimes in the heat of the game, you can actually jam your fingernail on it. It also acts as a button, so in total, that's 17 buttons. And for games this complex, you really need that many. When you pop in a game, the first thing you do is try every button before you figure out which ones do anything. Most of them don't do jack shit, and it's different for each game. That's why many of the games come with overlays. You slide it over the keys, and now you can see what they do. It helps out, but damn, what a shit little fuck. And the games barely fit in the cartridge slot. It's like trying to stick your dick in a Cheerio. So this is Space Battle. Sounds promising enough, but... Okay, what's this? None of the buttons do anything but make fart noises. And the overlay has a bunch of Triforces. Is this where they came from? All you gotta do is wait for the squadrons to meet the aliens, and then it brings up the battle screen where you shoot blueberry pancakes. This should be the whole game. Why does this part even exist? Next, uh, I don't know, let's try Mission X. More like Mission Ass. It's a 2D shooter, but it's real hard to shoot things. I mean, you have to be at the exact altitude. Two rises up and eight goes down, and the fire buttons are on the side. I mean, that's great, right? Why not spread the buttons out as much as possible? All right, what's next? How about Utopia? It's kind of a precursor to SimCity. You're basically the god of an island. You build stuff and storms come by and, uh, wow. All I can say is that back in 1981, people had a lot more imagination. Okay, how about He-Man? Oh man, I thought it was gonna be He-Man. So you're flying around in the Wind Raider shooting at stuff. 